Hi, my name is Jack Dangerman, and I'm going to talk about the dimensions and the directions of what I think are happening in the geospatial field, in science, in government, in consumer worlds, etc. I think we're entering into what I would call a new modality. And we've seen this and read about these kinds of things in other fields. For example, when film was first invented, the way they did it was film stage plays. And that was interesting because you could film stage play acting and put it in the can and ship it out and take it to many theaters. And that acting activity was disseminated everywhere. And then people learned that you could take the camera outside and do live performances. And we entered a whole new modality of film. Uh, when people began to play around with digital text, the first generation, and to some extent we're still here, was make electronic books and put them into these things called nooks or other little devices, and we can page through them and read books, and it's interesting. But what about Wikipedia and living books and living stories? We're at the age of a new modality of dissemination of living text and living reading, uh, and we're figuring that out right now. With maps, it was the same thing. We went from paper maps to digital maps, and the first efforts were largely based on CAD. We would automate the map, and then uh, we could disseminate the map, just like in theater and stage plays. Lots of people could see the map, but we didn't really leverage the map. We could change the scales, of course, and so on. And then GIS came along, and we were able to build a data model of geographic stuff behind the map. That allowed us to create many different maps from the same data and combine the data and do spatial analytics. It became a new modality, and the world changed. We could share this data. We could share the knowledge, and um, we've really been living in that modality for some decades. We're now entering a new modality for GIS, one that is on the web. And the first generation was we put maps on the web in the 90s, and then the invention of these slippy maps and web maps, as they're called, with cached information came about, and people began to interact with these maps like contribute information back. The age of volunteer geographic information emerged, and then distributed GISs that were served and could be mashed up and integrated. We could do distributed GIS, and uh, the world is changing. And just like with film, we're right in the mid midst of an enormous change. Uh, what is this change going to result in? I think we're seeing it already. On one hand, the development of uh, integrated systems. So instead of just buying a desktop or buying a server uh, or buying a mobile device, we're seeing the emergence of GIS systems where all these devices are connected on the web with a warehouse of geographic information, data, and maps, and analytic models, and workflows, data models. People are beginning to share this. So we're creating collectively a ecosystem of knowledge. So when I buy a desktop, I connect it into the web, and I can get other people's maps. I can get their data. I can download information. I can use their models, their services. And the age of geo-services is emerging. What does this mean? It means that government agencies will continue to use GIS exactly as they have in the past. They'll buy technology. They'll automate their maps. They'll make better decisions because of that. They'll integrate science into their work. They'll uh, communicate more effectively, and they'll drive efficiency like FedEx does and all of these um, interesting private sector companies. But at the same time, many of them are connecting into this ecosystem. They're drawing on cloud information resources integrated base maps for the planet, for example, or data sets or Landsat. And they use them in their system, in their enterprise systems or their desktop systems. And at the same time, they're sharing much of their content into the infrastructure. This term, the spatial information or uh, SDI, spatial uh, data infrastructure, is actually coming alive, finally, with the emergence of GIS on the web. I buy an iPhone. I have GIS on it, and I access this ecosystem, just like when I buy an iPhone and I access uh, Apple's marvelous uh, ecosystem of music and the web and all of these things. This is, we're right in the midst of a new modality for GIS, where it's multi-participant. It's distributed. 
people build on top of their existing workflows and activities, geographic knowledge that is shareable and usable. How is this coming about? It's being driven by five main elements. The first is the technology itself. The hardware uh, is getting cheaper, faster, all of the Moore's Law stuff, and now being put onto mobile devices and on the web and connected. That's one. And that just continues to evolve. A second evolution is measurement itself. We started with digitizing maps 40 years ago and then remote sensing and more automated techniques for capture and, and then sensor networks where we could actually sense online and connect it to the networks and have real-time information coming in. And now crowdsourcing. Uh, individuals, citizens, can input measurements into GIS on the web. We can get volunteer geographic information into these systems. And that's making our systems become more real-time and alive and available to everyone through mobile devices and this uh, emergence of the web and geo on the web. A third trend that's emerging is the software tools themselves. We've moved from mainframes to minis to workstations to PC software and client server and enterprise. Um, and now putting all of these systems into one system connected by web and web services. This is just very exciting because it, it says that we can create, author, data in a desktop, share it on a server, access it by anything, uh, share it with our friends, share it with everybody, or keep it in, uh, in, in a more proprietary environment. Um, this is going very fast. We're adding 3D. Uh, time is now an integral part to space and geography. Um, being able to visualize better, uh, more real-time uh, kinds of activities. And, uh, this, this is a march that keeps going on, which is very exciting to me. Um, a fourth dimension is that this technology is affecting what we know, our science. We're able to understand and model processes on the planet, everything from soil erosion to where it's best to grow particular products. Um, we are able to understand and interpret biology systems, health. Um, the science of geography is evolving, now moving into social networks and the integration of social networking technologies and systems with geospatial technologies is giving us new insight into how humans behave. Uh, and finally, at the same time as these other four things are occurring, we're seeing the emergence of new open data sharing policies. This is driven by sometimes political initiatives. In my country, uh, we're seeing it actually from the top. The president of the U.S. himself is driving it but also we're seeing it in state and local governments, the willingness to share data and get citizens involved. Promoting citizen engagement in government as a healthy way to have open democracy is occurring. It's a fifth dimension to what's occurring in the development of geospatial systems. What does all of this mean? I see in the future the connecting of all systems for collection, authoritative source data sets, and the emergence of a geospatial infrastructure connected through the web and open, based on standards, accessible, so that many vendors can participate and many application developers, uh, coders can build apps on top of the infrastructure and push along better behavior in our government push along better understanding so our businesses are more efficient, push along citizen understanding about the world, uh, what's occurring here, our environment, push along efficiencies, push along communication because maps are logical instruments for communicating stories of what's going on. This is, this is a big idea. On the other hand, I'm as certain as I'm, stand, I'm certain as I'm standing here that this evolution will occur. In terms of the way it'll occur, I see it emerging in two forms. One is a government, business, academic, dominated, distributed environment. Many nodes feeding into one network system, distributed much like the web itself. And second, into uh, systems that are 
clustered around search, like we see with Microsoft and Google today. Uh, maps that are a platform that express map services and location services. And there'll be different kinds of information that are emerging on these multiple platforms. In one case, authoritative source uh, information that describes the basic civil society and our science. And on the other case, new kinds of information that are collected by tr following traces of how cell phones move around building applications about location and location um, interaction. Uh, that'll, that'll affect behavior of individuals in their daily lives, uh, everything from search to, to behavior expressions. And the, in, the, in the case of the government systems and the building of infrastructure, it'll affect the way people at the societal level make decisions in government. It'll drive the way businesses uh, operate, driving more efficiency and better decisions. So these are two infrastructures, and they will mix and share information. Interoperability standards on the web itself mean that they can feed each other. We can use the web to reach consumer information with authoritative source, and vice versa. Consumer data and, and personal behavior data will mix into this kind of emerging infrastructure. So you in the geospatial field, from the executive down to the technician, are working in a field that's growing very fast. It's emerging and will provide hmm, a new kind of knowledge for us to behave and evolve into the future. Um, a infrastructure which will look at uh, all of the footprints of human beings on the planet and guide us in terms of where we put our footprints, how we build, how we develop, uh, the decisions that we make, areas that we conserve, um, areas that we protect, areas that we develop. All human behavior and activities will be guided with these geospatial infrastructures which are increasingly socially available to everyone. Um, I challenge you to play hard in this because I think our future depends upon it. I think it's important. Thank you.